I'm getting older, though. I got to plan ahead, be proactive. I mean, not as old as some, but yeah. You know. <laughs> You're on mute, Tracy. <laughs> old as Bray. He's 50. Yeah. The 50 crew. My connection just went. We are live. Already? We're <laughs> All right, we're going to call the Wednesday, July 1st, 2020 Board of Ed meeting back to order. Everyone, please silence your electronic devices and we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Additions and deletions to the agenda since Friday mailing. Yes, we'll have three. We're going to be adding to business consideration 6.20. Um, we're going to add a resolution to actually um, approve that we move the <clears throat> reorg meeting to today, July 1st, instead of the first Tuesday in July. Um, additions to the personnel, uh, 7.5 will be the appointment of Colleen Augustinoni to the assistant director for direct, uh, student service, support services, so, sorry. And then we have Timothy King will be appointed as a special ed teacher. Okay. So can I get a motion for our additions? Okay. Mr. McFerrin, Mrs. Burns, all in favor. I. Okay, I need a motion for the acceptance of the minutes of the June 24th, 2020 meeting. Mr. Rangel, Mr. McFerrin, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have no awards, honors, recognitions. We have no hearings and petitions. Need a motion for business considerations. Motion for all except 619. Okay, we have a second. Mr. McFerrin, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motions pass. Need a motion for 619. Mr. Oh, Angle. Second. Mr. Ross. Any discussion? Okay. We will be well call for this. Okay, ready? Okay, ready. Yeah. Mr. Angle? Aye. Mr. McFerrin? Aye. Mrs. Hill Burns. Aye. Mr. Reveille. Aye. Mrs. Hotelling. Aye. Mr. Ross. Aye. Mr. Heislop. Aye. Mrs. Shackleton. Aye. And Mrs. Klein. Yep, yeah, she said aye. She's on mute again. <laughs> can hear her anyways. Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, need a motion for one or all of the personnel considerations. Motion for all. Okay. Second. Mr. McFerrin, any discussion? Just thank you for 7.1 to Mrs. Wimmer for 30 years of service. Yes, thank you. Enjoy your time in retirement. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motions pass. Special reports. I have nothing to report. Any other Board of Ed members have anything to report? We will turn it over to Dr. Bailey. Our class of 2020 has graduated at least three times now. <clears throat> Um, and it's still not enough for, for all that they've gone through in the last few months. But uh, this past weekend, we had a live graduation Saturday morning, um, which we did in one hour and 17 minutes. And, uh, the, and we did the drive-in on Sunday night. And um, uh, coverage of both those events can be found on our Facebook page. And the graduation video that we aired on Sunday night is available on our YouTube page, also available by following a link from our website. Um, but uh, having been at both events, um, I can't thank the families enough for 
dealing with the accommodation. Um, students, um, I, uh, I'm so glad they had a chance to be together twice. They were together the drive-in as well, but you know, in the end, they're the ones who have suffered the most from this, the things that they would have celebrated together, they weren't able to. So it was so awesome to see them together and hear them cheering and yelling for each other through that process. So I'm grateful to all the people who helped make those events possible and to the families and the, um, the Spotlight newspaper just came out today with the edition that has all of our graduates in it, has a centerfold with everybody's picture um, it's really awesome, and um, we ha they gave us 200 free copies as well, and they'll be available in the vestibule of our high school between 8 and 11, uh, Monday through Thursday. So if anybody wants to grab a copy, a free copy of that, or they can, of course, buy one at any of local places, um, feel free to do that. <clears throat> we signed up for the BOCES grant writing service last year, uh, and they have um, provided for us uh, tenfold. Um, I don't think they've been unsuccessful in any of the applications that they filed. Um, we've just received a, a farm to school grant that Fred can fill in a little bit on about $30,000 worth. And we've just applied for a $50,000 um, distance learning grant. But they have been overwhelmingly successful in efforts on behalf of our school. And, and the board has approved a number of these grants over the course of the, the last year. <clears throat> I mentioned the reopening committees last week uh, when we met and uh, the next meeting of our reopening committees is this Tuesday. They're broken up into four different committees, uh, elementary ed, secondary ed, operations and um, human resources. And um, we anticipate that by midsummer we'll have a pretty reasonable plan for how we're gonna re-enter the school. Uh, also knowing that the governor and the Department of Health will be providing guidance sometime about what that'll look like. Um, and um, <clears throat> Board of Ed meetings, July 6th. Oh, I know this is gonna break your heart, Jason, but as of July 6th, the governor's order allowing for remote board meetings will end. <laughs> <clears throat> so as of right now, unless there is further guidance from the governor, as of July 22nd, we must convene in person. Um, so be prepared for that. I know, I know. But um, we'll see uh, if there's any additional executive orders. Before that time, of course, we'll have a number of protocols in place so that um, everyone will understand what they need to do when they enter the building. Um, the public, uh, the, really the parameters around this is about public uh, meeting law and public meeting law requires that the public be able to view our meetings. So um, with the end of this executive order, it means that not only will we be meeting in person, but we must invite the public to attend our meetings in person. So that may mean we have to meet in a different location in order to accommodate this. That may mean, uh, well, we already stream, so that'll help people's uh, virtual participation anyway but um, we have three weeks to figure out how we proceed with the back to normal, new normal, whatever that's gonna be. So we shall see. Brian, I just had a quick question about the, re the um, re um, rethinking the school year, the committees that you put together. Um, yep. Has RCS come up with any plans already or are you still developing them? And the reason that I ask is that um, have uh, family members not my own family members, but family district family members that teach within the Catskill district. And they keep referring to uh, the RCS plan as what they're using as their model. And I didn't, I wasn't sure that we had a plan. We, is that the Rochester city school district? Oh. No, we, uh... it's, Catskill, it's Catskill that's referring to yeah. the RCS plan. I just didn't know if we had a plan in place, if it's just a draft plan that we that other districts are modeling after, what it was, because I know that we're putting these committees together about yeah. thinking about what we're doing. Uh, probably the plan they're referring to was our instructional plan, um, because that had uh, a lot of factors to it that could be continued into the summer and into the fall. But as far as strict reopening, we do not. And that's primarily because there hasn't been a directive from the state as yet. 
So um, the work that these committees are doing, I mean, they're doing it really with a little bit of a blindfold on. We're having to plan for a lot of different potentialities. Um, but what we know, I mean, the, the basically bill or building on is all the things we learned in the last four months. Yeah. How do we communicate with families? How do we train family, students, and staff? How do we do it with continuity? Um, and then we just apply them to whether or not we're able to appear in person. So we don't have anything out yet as far as reopening yet. Okay, thank you. Brian, on the same uh, path as what Bill just said, I saw an ad today for one of the colony school districts where they were looking for bus drivers and they specifically were mentioning how they'll have to alter their bus routes to provide additional spacing for students. So I didn't know if that is something that's being discussed at all district levels or are they just putting themselves out there proactively trying to, to get staff? The most heartbreaking thing about this is that there has not been a single shred of guidance from the state education department or the governor about what it should look like when we reopen. As for instance, Vermont and Connecticut just came out with their plans last week. They very clearly outline what it should look like on a bus in an elementary classroom in a cafeteria. We have no guidance like that. So as South Colony puts out their posting, what they're doing is they're prognosticating a little bit and they're, they're guessing. Because for instance, in the Vermont or one of those plans, it says with masks on, there is no proximity issue, full buses. But the masks are intended for those opportunities when you can't be in close, when you have to be in close proximity. Therefore, you can be in proximity with masks on. It's until New York gives us that guidance, I, I'm, we're not going to be putting something out that, that says that. But I don't flaw anybody for doing so. They're really trying their best guess about what the CDC has offered, what other states have offered, because many of the Southern states are coming back to school two to three weeks before us. That means they're, they are out before us and they're two or three weeks ahead of us in the planning process. How Vermont and Connecticut got out ahead of us, I'm not sure, but um, New York needs to give voice to this before we say anything. I, I guess I was more concerned because we've struggled with this in regular time, pre-COVID. And yep. if this is something that districts are going to have to contend with a higher number of drivers in order to make these plans doable, um, how far out do we wait? Or should we be proactively putting things out for drivers now, knowing that we're always in a deficit mm -hmm. situation? And in all honesty, Tina, the, you're right about that. We always have that constriction in our bus, our transportation department. But the, the way that this is potentially being proposed, we, all districts, may not have enough staff in any department to do what they're proposing. For instance, how do we offer um, partial days or extended day while simultaneously offering distancing? That means smaller numbers in a classroom while simultaneously offering distance learning or remote learning for families whose children can't or refuse to come to school. Um, the, the conversation around superintendents right now is the doom and gloom of, I know that I will be able to offer classes if they say 50%. In other words, we can have 50% of students there on a Monday and a different 50% there on a Tuesday. Some, some schools can easily say we can do that. Some schools have already said we're going out of business if that's what they're saying because I need 30 more staff members to distance the kids the way they're proposing. So um, it, it is, it's like a it's like playing darts with a blindfold on and a high wind um, coming from the side. It is, it's bad news. So we do work together as superintendents uh, twice a week on these problems. The assistant superintendents are working together. The business officials are working together. But until New York tells us what it is we're supposed to do, we're all just, we're guessing. We will push out. Um, we will continue to promote uh, drivers uh, and with high unemployment rates, we hope that we are able to draw drivers in um, that, that would be great. The, um, and if, if the COVID unemployment relief funding starts to diminish, we'll see people willing to come back to the workforce as well. So there's a balance there that we're hoping we uh, win. Brian, has there been any talk across school districts about doing some sort of shared virtual learning um, for students or parents that are, um, you know, 
against having their children go back into the classrooms, uh, given that it would represent a percentage of the overall mm -hmm. population trying to collaborate across school districts for those things within Lake Capital Region BOCES? Absolutely. And even the work we did in the last three months was a good example of that. The um, uh, BOCES developed this um, instructional guidance page, uh, one for staff and one for students. And they actually had um, individual teachers from our district contributing to that. Bridget Engelhart was one of those teachers. We had another elementary teacher, Fred, do you remember who it was? Peter B. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I know um, but they, the middle school helped as well. Miss Sawyer at the middle school helped. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some middle school and high school folks as well who helped with that. So what they did, Bill, is they, uh, they worked in strategic teams from the 24 school districts to develop instructional plans for teachers to utilize. I know that's not exactly what you asked, but the, uh, the extension of that conversation is if, if uh, Kaksaki Athens is offering uh, remote learning for um, seventh graders, why couldn't our kids just jump on board? OCS is considering that and, and what that would look like. And it's often favorable for us to do it because it becomes an aidable event. New York State does not have a mechanism for us to share with another district right now. And you receive the aid that we would ordinarily get through BOCES. Um, so we will look for BOCES to offer that. It is much more streamlined than everyone trying to offer everything. I was just thinking from a resource perspective, right? Yeah. Um, you know, if you can share resources, if we could, if we had to devote um, five teachers to distant learning and so did a neighboring district, you know, you could put potentially put something together with enough neighboring districts to offer a fully, um, you know, distant learning year without anyone having to put together, you know, comprehensive staffs for that. Yeah, it's a great point. And ideally, we move toward that. If nothing else, this this pandemic has awakened us to the potential potential that we have to do things differently than we've done in the past. Um, and I think um, the uh, the parents see the potential and staff see the potential. Some people want nothing to do with it, which is fine. They want to go back to the way everything was, which is fine. Um, but um, it's really opened some doors for us that were not there just four or five months ago. Do we think that we're going to have to revote on the BOCES calendar because of the Juneteenth holiday? Didn't we I already approve next year's BOCES calendar? We did. They'd have to legislate that still. Yeah, school boards have the have the ability to work around work around days, um, and we knew how we know how compacted this year's calendar was. Um, offering any day any additional day off in the middle between the first day of school and last day of school is going to be a problem. So right. It's a good question, and you're right. The legislative let us legislature will drive that. Tina. We good. All right, we'll turn it over to Mr. Engelhart. Just uh, two quick things I wanted to mention and the, our summer programming for students in um, high school and middle school um, is underway. We are utilizing BOCES for students in high school who may need interventions for full year courses. So it's a six week course through BOCES. Um, the second uh, program we have is something new for us. It's a three week, two to three week summer intensive using apex um, and our own folks in-house to really support those students who needed some remediation for quarter three and quarter four so they did well for most of the year but because of covid they kind of dropped off um, for whatever reason so we're, we're going to be starting that july 13th it'll be just mondays through thursdays two hours a day um, and we will give some more information around um, that at our next board meeting um, Dr. Bailey mentioned the farm to school grant. So this is something that we worked on. It is a, it's a good chunk of change. It's, it's great. We've been talking about this for a while with Mr. Porter. Um, it's going to really supply and supplement some of the work we've done with the greenhouse and the, the community garden, but um, do much more with curriculum integration. Um, it's going to offer some support for salaries for folks to be able to do um, more with bringing in local produce into the schools. 
Um, I believe there's some equipment uh, funding in that as well. So um, we're really looking forward to that work. We won't have the details until the next couple of weeks. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to mention that this uh, New York State, uh, in context to what we were talking about, New York State is supposed to come out with some, um, the Education Department is supposed to come out with some guidance, I believe on July 13th, so um, around reopening. So we are waiting for that. We have done some pre, pre um, uh, proactive measures. So Mr. Schramm and myself went around to various classrooms and moved desks around and took out our measuring tapes and did all that work. So, there are some things that we are doing to try to be as planned as possible. So as soon as we get some of those guardrails on where we need to be, we can make some decisions pretty quick. That's really it. Okay. How many students? How many students did we have that ended up with an incomplete? Well, um, I can give you numbers of students we're sending to summer programming. I'd have to look back at how many actually had incompletes, because we were focusing on courses that were credit bearing or regent bearing. So we had about 30 students um, who are attending BOCES. Uh, it's about 40 courses. So students may have multiple courses they have to take. And then we had about 20 to 25 that just needed some of quarter three, quarter four remediation. Uh, but there was about 32 courses. So they had additional courses they had to take for that. So that would be just high school? Just high school for now. I am working with Ms. Buzas and Mr. Adamek on what a middle school program will look like, and we should have that information out as well. Um, they're really focusing mostly on English, uh, which I think we could imagine why. Um, and, and surprisingly, social studies will be the next topic. They feel, uh, um, excuse me, I take that back, not English, math and social studies. Um, they feel like through, um, through remediation for next year, they'll be able to cover science and English in-house. Um, but they're really concerned about social studies and math. So we're looking at some, instead of using Apex, we're gonna use a platform uh, called IXL, which has a lot of the similar um, similar kind of tools in place for students to get that intervention. So that way we would have middle school or even high school kids take this work during the summer and start in September where they need to and not oh, have to make the work. Yeah, that's the hope. The, the middle school was really, really hoping that guidance would come out with state around um, like in-person remediation. They were really hoping, they knew these students were the ones who didn't necessarily engage remotely. So they were hoping for in-person. In so they were trying to push it off as much as possible. But I think if we do some one-to-one -one or small group, do some um, live remote, um, that, that might help. So we're, we're still trying to come up with some really good ideas around that. It's not a lot of kids, um, but it's enough that we do want to make sure they have a jump start coming into the new year. Right. I know that notoriously we have an issue with those fifth graders entering middle school um, pre-COVID. What are we doing to identify kids that either disengaged, fell behind, are struggling at that fifth grade level before they're thrown into the stressors of going to a new building. Have we have any kind of plan for those high risk individuals? I can't say that we do. I think what's challenging is that over the last two years, we've been able to do more with assessments and screeners for those kids. And unfortunately, because of what occurred, we weren't able to give any end of the year screeners. I do know, because uh, we use FastBridge for a lot of this work, uh, that middle school started using FastBridge last year for math and English. I don't know what that's going to look like in the spring if we have to do something remotely. So it's a good question. If we're back traditionally, physically, we give the students a screener. We look to see what skills they're missing. We can remediate um, during that time. That's That would be best case scenario. If we have to do something remotely, I think it'll be a little bit more challenging. Yeah, I think things are... Oh, I'm okay. sorry. I, I... I think I'm more concerned. I mean, the, obviously, academics is always our top priority, but the the transition piece itself seems to be a major factor. And if you've got kids that have not been face to face for months mm -hmm. and now are being thrown into, they didn't close out elementary and they're being thrown into a new building with new teachers and new structures and new concerns because they've been hearing mm -hmm. for months how dangerous it is to go to school. Um, that we're going to have to have some sort of interventions in there in place for some of these kids that are going to struggle just entering the building for the first time. 
we yeah, talked to that is actually one of the focus topics that we've been, we talked about in our first uh, reorg meeting it was exactly that so it is something we're, we're looking at I was going to say one of the you know we 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 think our focus is going to be elementary because they're less independent and if we have to do some remote or hybrid then secondary but we did say to uh, Ms. Shackleton's point that sixth grade or fifth graders going into sixth grade may have to be that grade that comes back physically as one of our priorities students with IEPs would be another priority as well um, and then our sixth graders because of that transition year <clears throat> That's it for me. Okay, Mrs. Moran. I have two questions for the Board of Education this evening. Um, a little bit of discussion and a question. Um, as you know, every year we do a, a comprehensive um, uh, uh, a formula to come up with what the school lunch prices need to be going into the next year. It's based on the number of meals we did in the previous year. We give it a weighted average. Then we factor in a state mandated CPI plus 2% to see where our weighted average is. It tells us how much we can increase school lunch prices. This year with the formula, it would call for a 10 cent raise for school lunches. Now, if we are in our profit and loss statement with the school lunch fund as of December 31st, we were in the red or in the black, excuse me, which we were. And that includes all of our benefits. We put everything in our profit and loss statement now. We can waive that this year and not increase the price. Mind you, it's a mandate. It's nothing that we can pick and choose. We have to be within a certain limit. We can waive that this year, but I would like to know before we made that decision, it could create a higher increase in the following year. So right now what I'm telling you is that based on the formula, we would increase lunches from 275 to 285 in the elementary schools, 310 to 320 at the high schools. I ask this information now because we are getting ready to get, publish all our information that's going out for the 2021 20, school year. We can waive it. We have the right to not increase lunches, but I just want to be clear that it could make for a higher bump in the next year. I defer to the Board of Education for a discussion your opinions. No, Joanne, does it have to be done the at the beginning year. of a year or can you readjust halfway through the year? We could readjust halfway through the year, Tina. That's a good point. But that's $18 over the course of a year, right? Yes. Just do it. It's crazy. I, it's I, I would do it because you, I agree. Uh, I, the fact that it could go up significantly in the future year would cause more problems than gradually increasing it, I think. Well, and this is the full paid lunch price. That's, I mean, if my kid eats every day, which he does, that's $18 over the course of the year. Everybody who gets free and reduced, it's not going to affect. So it's right. full price. You're correct, Bray. It's for the full price lunch cost. So what I hear is that we will go with the, the mandated formula, we'll increase it by 10 cents. And the other question um, or discussion I'd like to have with the Board of Education this evening is every year we update our district um, level safety plans and our building level safety plans. We um, utilize need and risk management to assist us with that. And we started the process. It's something we like to get done by September, ideally, where it gets approved. Um, this year, there's two changes. We have to increase. We have a, a committee that's part of that. Um, I, they don't meet regularly, but we do have a committee formed. And this year, we have to have a member of the teachers unit, which I've done. And there has to be a member of the Board of Education on this committee. I don't know if we want to link it to the board president's position, the vice president, or just a volunteer. But I need um, a member of this Board of Education to be named on that committee. Nominate Teddy Revely. <laughs> Joanne, is it during the day? <laughs> uh, we don't meet as a rule team, but we would do it during hours that would be beneficial to everybody. Later in the afternoon, it wouldn't be during the middle of the day. So the guy with a flexible schedule. <laughs> um, I'm thinking that that would be Teddy Revely. So, Bray, have you indicated you want to be on it? If you want me to, I'll do it. I'm on the district safety committee at April Park. So it wouldn't be bad for me to be able to compare the two and see what, you know, see how things are done. If you want, 
if you if Teddy wants to do it, he's more than welcome. I'll switch <laughs> it to Princess. Yeah. <laughs> no, if Bray wants to do it, it's fine. Right, I can be your backup too. If there's a meeting you can't make it to, just let me know and I'll fill in your spot. Yeah, cool. that's fine. I'm fine with being a backup too. <laughs> so I'm fine with both of you guys being backups. Yeah. And what will happen is after we update the information, um, we've already notified all the building leaders that um, the gentleman Malcolm from Needham Risk Management will be reaching out to all of them to update their individual plans. We will put our district wide plan, we'll make it available for the 30 day period, which we do every year. It'll be on the website and it will list uh, Mr. Engel. And then we'll do this every year. So that's the only change to the plan right now. And uh, that's all I have. Okay. Hey, one quick thing I wanted to bring up is, you know, the governor has this thing with not opening malls in places because of air filtration systems. And it just gives me the, and I know Bill Schramm's probably already on top of this anyways, of knowing our air filtration system, HEPA filters, all the things, because he's going to come out with it for schools as well as my guess, correct? Just being proactive. We have a pretty um, substantial plan in place right now scheduled to replace filters. I don't know if you want to jump in on that, Dr. Bailey. Um, I know we do that already. Um, Bill's well aware of it and prepared for supplies is in already changing them out. I don't know if you want to we expect to, What we expect to see happen is there, there will need to be official guidance on what the exchange rate of air is. So for instance, they may say uh, going from 20% fresh air rate, um, they may say you need to increase to 40% uh, fresh air rate. So they open the flap more, so allow more fresh air into every classroom. They have not given official guidance yet, but when they do, we know that we're, we're ready to take action and do that. Every school is gonna be in the same, have the same problem when we get to that point. But yes, you're exactly right. And people have already voiced that concern about internal air quality. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else on this uh, old business that anybody wants to go over or any new business items? No? Uh, C and I committee meeting minutes attached finance committee meeting minutes attached. Is there anything you guys want to discuss about the C and I meeting? Uh, if I remember the details correctly, cause I think it was about a month ago. Um, we were excited that there's going to be a uh, new uh, oh my gosh, my brain's fried at this point. Um, the new science, science for yes. our, her operation graduation. Right. So it'll be a nice step up um, from the traditional jump right into lab science, which can be a little overwhelming and to kind of uh, walk the students through uh, so they have a first step science, um, more focused on life science, if I'm correct and then they'll be better suited to be able to go into earth science afterwards, so. And then also- Are you okay, Fred? Yes, you did perfect. Great. And then also um, women in the women in lit class as well. So we'll bring both of those courses to the board at our next meeting for, for official approval. Right, and we did discuss during the committee um, how schedules were made so, so far, uh, because you know we wanna make sure that we have good attendance in those classes, not just offering them for a few, and that they had put the surveys out for students to make sure there would be um, adequate interest in them and to fill the classes. Okay. Good. Finance committee meeting minutes. We talked about that last meeting. No policy adoption review, no hearings and petitions. Next meeting is July 22nd. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. Mr. Engel, second Mr. McFerrin. Tracy, good job changing the clothes, putting the hair up there. Yeah. So is she next meeting with Madonna over there? What was so that? Next, well, next meeting will be on site then? Or is That's that a still TBD? Oh, all right. Next as meeting will be Teddy, are we going to do the same committees as last year? Send me your request if you want anything different. How about everybody no, just send me your request? Maybe we'll change it up a little I'm bit. I'm good. Finance is where I'm at. 
<laughs> oh God! Uh, somebody take policy. All right, maybe we can change it up. Kristen has Fridays available. Maybe she can make Friday morning meetings. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, motion to adjourn. We already did that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. You also. Bye, everybody. <laughs>